hello viewers in this video i'm going to talk about event hub as an ingestion tool for streaming in azure ecosystem so i'm going to give a general overview of data streaming using azure data streaming job as the tool to query and process the data all these processes will be implemented data producers collection and staging ingress and capture processing storage and presentation so these are the processes in which i'm going to carry out this exercise this is the streaming architecture i'm going to use the tools circled or ticked as the event of is a data ingestion service which streams a huge data from any source to provide an immediate response to business challenges so this is the overview of the azure event hub during the demonstration we get to know more about this azure event hub has these key service characteristics pretty precise before you start make sure you have completed the following steps so these are the steps let's get started i'm in azure portal under the search option i type event hub this is it if i click event hub i click create namespace is the logical grouping of event hubs you can have many event hubs in a namespace let's take for example this event hub a event hub b you can go on to have multiple event hubs in one namespace so that's the first thing we need to create azure subscription already selected i select my resource group I give it a name location i leave it as default present here i select this throughput units i leave it as default since it's just a demonstration throughput units is the amount of the capacity i click create i click create again the creation is successful i go to resource i click event subs i click the plus sign to create it i name it partition counts i choose one these are the partitions you can partition it as many as 32 let me show you as much as 32 i just need only one partition retention clean up policy delete okay retention time 24 hours next capture capture automatically sends the events to the storage and it doesn't require any code i don't need it so i click create i click create again i've successfully created the event hub now i come over to shared access policy i click on it this is the default shared access policy to connect the top party app to azure event hub i'm going to use the default shared access policy and this one is binding on the entire namespace all the hubs on that entire namespace can make use of the default access policy but if you want to configure the shared access policy for individual event hub all you need to do is just to locate that particular event hub click event hub you will see all the event hubs let's say we have more than one event hub you see them listed here you click on that particular event hub like I have one event hub here i click on it then click this add i set it up click create this particular one will be binding on only this event hub i go over to the namespace click on shared access policy connection stream primary key i copy it save it in my notepad let me go ahead to set up the app that will be streaming the data i'm going to use Teco data generator app from microsoft site to stream the data into event hub all i need to do is to google take data generator app this is the site i click on this zip file to download this is it there i open it right click take data gen config click open it has opened in my visual studio i installed in my laptop you can use any IDE environment. You can use Notepad++, Eclipse, or whatever IDE environment to open it. Two things I need to do here. I need to configure 
event hub name i need to put the connection uh, string so let me start by putting my event hub name this is my event hub name i copy it under event hub name i come over here and paste it i do the same here let me copy the connection string which i copied earlier on from my shared access key policy under connection string i remove this then paste it i click save now let me run it using my command prompt this is the folder directory part i copy it put it in my command prompt i mean the directory part this is the code i'm going to use to run it 1000 is the number of rules it's going to generate 0.2 is the percentage of the the fraudulent call probability y2 is the number of hours the app will run let me run it by clicking enter as you can see this is duration hour two call back 0.2 then this is the number of rows is going to generate as you can see it's running let me set up the streaming i come over to azure portal to create stream analytics job i type stream analytics i click on it i don't have anyone created yet I click create i name it region i leave it as, as as it is hosting environment i leave it as it is streaming unit i leave it at default one streaming unit is the amount of streaming power allocated to azure streaming analytics job i leave every other thing as, as it is and click create to create it the stream analytics job has been created i go to resource this is the stream analytics dashboard for any activity to take place i need to create both the input and output job come over to job topology click on the input the input will ingest the data while the output will consume the data for analysis here is the input i click this drop down select event of i click on event of this is my event of name select event of from your subscription and this is my subscription use the existing event of uh, yes event of consumer group i use default authentication mode i use connection stream since i use the connection string when setting up the third party app create event of uh, policy i use the existing event serialization format i choose Jackson format. I leave every other thing at default and click save. Successfully saved. The input has been created. Before I create the output, let me create the storage container. I've already created the storage account. I click on it. I click containers. As you can see, I don't have any container here. I click this plus sign. I name it anonymous access level. I select container i click create so this is my container i click on it there's no file in it let me create the output i click on output i click add output drop button i select block storage to get dls gen 2 select block storage from your subscription i select this subscription already selected it has already selected all this for me authentication mode i, I choose connection stream the format i use the comma i leave every other thing the way it is i click save the output has been created i check the telco generator app is still running i go back to stream analytics job i click query i need to write my query this is my query select star into my output container stream from my input which is event of dash tutor demo let me run the test it's successful let me save the query i click start job i click start successful let me go to container and check whether the, the data is here i click containers this is my container i click on it so these are the files that are streaming let me click on it i click edit these are the files i can as well download i click download i open the download this is the file i've downloaded it that's it for this segment now let's do further analysis 
job by adding another output, Azure Snaps Analytics. I go to my resource group, type on the search bar, Azure Snaps Analytics. I click on it. I click Create, Subscription, Selected, Resource Group. I select it, Manage Resource Group. I leave it, Top Compulsory, Workspace Name. I name it Region. I leave it as it is from subscription account name of the storage i select it for i name let me pause this creation and go ahead to create another container i'm in the storage account i click containers click on the plus sign to create a new container i name it i click container i create i go over to the snap workspace to complete the creation under my system name i click the new container i created i click create the creation is successful. Go to resource group. I click open Snap Studio. What I have here is a serverless pool. I cannot create table using serverless pool. I can only import table. So for that reason, I'm going to use a dedicated SQL Server. server. I go to manager. Click on manager. I click new. I rename this performance level. Let me go for the lowest. I click create. I click create again. The deployment is completed. Click on data tab. Table. I create table. Let me copy my script. I delete this one. Paste my script and run it. My table creation is successful. So let me set up the output. This is my stream analytics. I go over here. Output. Click, click on it. I select Azure Snaps Analytics. Azure Snaps Analytics uh, output requires a storage account to run. Please configure a storage account for the job to add to the Azure Snaps Analytics. So let me go over here to set up the storage account. I go to account settings, click on account settings, click add storage. Let me select my account storage. This is my account storage. Authentication mode, connection string. I click apply. Let me go to output. As you can see, that message is no longer there. Username, password, and the table. I did it with a password when I set up the dedicated database pool. Let me set it up. Close this. To create the password for my dedicated SQL cell, I come over here under these three dots. I click on it. Click reset password. Type in my password. Click save. Select uh, as a snaps and edit it from the I've already done that. The username. I come over here. This is my username. Password, I put in my password, table name, copy my table name, I click save. Now that I've set up the output, let, let me go ahead and set up the query. I click on query. This is my query. Let me save it. I click save. Let me test the query. Fantastic. This is the data. Let me go to Azure Snaps Analytics. This is my table. Select top 100 rows. Executed successfully. So I have the data in my snaps and edits. That's it. The last segment of this uh, video is to output the data to the Power BI. I'm using the Power BI desktop. Even though the Power BI desktop doesn't have direct connection to the Azure Streaming Analytics tool. I mean Azure Snaps Analytics. So all I need to do is to come over here. To my power bi desktop click on get data click more i click azure snaps analytics click connect so to get the server name i go to azure snaps analytics click properties since i'm using dedicated sql endpoint i copy it i go over to my power bi desktop i put it put my database name click ok i use microsoft account to sign in i click connect this is the table i tick it is previewing the table okay so this is my table i click load as you can see it has loaded my table let me view my table i've succeeded in connecting to my power di so from here you can do the reporting that's the much i can cover in this video if this video is helpful to you please don't forget to subscribe hit the notification button so that you will be notified whenever i add more videos thank you for watching